Hi folks, Lee here with the Market Sense for the week of March 20th, 2019. As is always the case, the charts from the presentation come from the Trade Navigator software, which is provided to us by Genesis. Uh, looking at a weekly bond market chart here, you can see after this massive run-up and a kind of a spike high here, we've got a lot of sideways going for, oh, it's almost three months now. Um, after a t an attempt to break down here a couple weeks ago, they turned back up to the highs, which is normally what you'd expect. Doesn't mean they're breaking out the highs, and so far they don't appear to be doing so. I uh, would have liked to seen them at least try. This is just below 147 up here. This little blue line is 146.28. I would like to see them and try that. They they seem to be having difficulty doing that, but they are also staying above 145.08, which is the middle moving average. So there's certainly no damage done here. And in fact, they could go all the way down to the 144 area here and would still be just holding support. When you get sideways like this, uh, there's really nothing predictive about it. They're going to break out eventually. Uh, you got to watch for false breaks because they break and then recover right away. But they're not going to make a major move until they break out, and it, I don't find the timing of that breakout terribly predictable. So at this point, we're kind of at minimum looking for them to go below 143 or above 147 and just kind of bang around in the meantime. I mean, you can try to nibble and take little pieces off of support resistance here, but there's just not anything major going on at this point, and there won't be until they break out of this big sideways range. Uh, stock market, of course, looks completely different. This is the E-mini S&P, and they finally had a breakdown here after not even trading the middle moving average all year. They broke down all the way below everything, but then recovered it and turned right back up last week to close above everything. Uh, this week they've gone up to test the highs. This is 2864, which they haven't quite got to, but they did go up first. And this support here is 2826. That's what they should hold if they're in a strong uptrend. Now, this move down in recovery doesn't necessarily mean they're in a strong uptrend, but they could be. Um, and so as long as they stay above 2826, you, you got to think that's a distinct possibility that they're actually going back to test these highs back here in the middle of the chart. Uh, by the same token, with the size of this move up, you know, back down to, to 2790 here or even below 2750, boy, nothing wrong with that. That wouldn't look ugly at all, just uh, kind of normal. But at this point, I think there's still the possibility that they just move higher. The one negative that I will say about this is much of this strength so far this week has happened overnight. They they make big moves overnight and then don't really hold them during the day. That's not normally the way the market goes up. They, they would more likely open lower and then drive up during the day if the if the market's really strong. Now I'm not saying they can't go up, you know, during off hours, European hours and stuff, but this is not the normal strength you'd like to see when they weaken during the day and their biggest moves are overnight to the upside. That's, that's a little disturbing that they, they could be in some trouble based on that. But strictly on the beta of support and resistance, they're holding the support that they need to do to be in a strong uptrend. And honestly, coming into the week, you wouldn't necessarily have predicted a strong uptrend. So it'll be fun to see what they come up with. So that's what we've got for you today. I hope you can find something profitable to get yourself 